Hi everyone, welcome back to this channel. Today we have another Ultraboost 21 from this year. And as always, we start with the unboxing. Here we can see some of my sizes in other brands. We can see here the label a bit better with details. We start with the left foot because we want to see both of them. I think you notice already that they are a bit different in comparison with others. Ultraboost 21, yeah, is that tongue, it's a bit different. So they decided to change the logo where it stands and how it looks on this particular pair. I don't know why they, why they did that, but they did it anyway. It was their choice, I guess. Maybe it wasn't enough confusion with Ultraboost 21. What I mean by that is they are made in Vietnam, they are made in China. In China they are black on the footbed inside. In the rest of the world they are white, so yeah. Later I will show you a bit better what I mean by that. So back to this sneaker. I like how it looks this black with orange. That orange is a bit like holographic one. Here we can see the sole. I always prefer to see black rubber on sole or any other color than transparent that we can see in other uh, Ultraboost 21 or maybe semi-transparent. So if you're wondering why exactly that thing bothers me, well, usually that color will uh, look like your phone case after two years if it's a transparent one you know it will look that color like brownish color it won't look good you know over time that's why I don't like it transparent or semi-transparent as you know by now this rubber sole is made with uh, this brand Continental they always had their logo on the sole in Ultra Boost. I think this year the compound on this rubber sole changed it. They managed to make it a bit better because last year they were feeling like suction cups. I didn't like them at all. You couldn't uh, wear them because you will hear that noise over and over again. It was quite annoying to be honest. But this year they changed it a bit and they did it well on that regard at least. Maybe it is just one thing that I still don't like it with this rubber sole and that it has to be the exposed boost foam. I don't like it to have foam on the sole exposed, you know. Because this rubber sole, it will be exactly like the tires of your car. You would like to see in your tires places where they are thin like a balloon. You think that is safe? I don't think so. I don't know. It's just a thought, you know because maybe Continental knows one thing or two about that thing. Anyway, let's see the insoles. The insoles, they are exactly the same like we seen this year and last year also in uh, Ultraboost 20. I wish they were a bit more like the ones from New Balance 1080 version 11 because those, they have a bit better cushioning in my opinion and that thing matters when it's a running sneaker. And now I will explain a bit what's the thing with made in Vietnam or made in China. What problems they can create those things. This is the comment that I received from a viewer. So basically he was buying some uh, Ultraboost 21 from a different uh, store, not Adidas store. And he saw exactly what I'm seeing here for the first time, I have to say. I never seen thin layer of foam in white over the boost material in black this year. 
So that was a strange change and that creates confusion, you know. And these ones, they were, had been buy it from Adidas store. So let me clear these things. I don't care if I receive them from Vietnam or China, but I do care about the quality. It has to be consistent in both models if they are at the same price. And normally when a company goes to China, it goes because they want to make fast and cheap. And they can achieve that, but not always with the best quality. And it's not because the workers, they are lazy or something. It's not that, trust me, it's not that. It's just the pressure, the pressure, the, the kind of pressure they are putting over them to make them fast and, and plenty of them. So by now, you are wondering, what do I care so much about the color that is under that insole? Because I cannot see it most of the time, so it doesn't affect me. Well, I care because when you do a thing in many ways, other brands, they can make these sneakers look the same with some problems and you will not be able to see it. You'll think, yeah, well, it's because it came from that place, you know. You'll find excuses and you won't be able to see which one is original and which one is fake. That's why to be consistent is very important. So I don't care if it comes from China, India, you name it. I don't care. But keep the quality the same. Just keep the same amount of making them like in your country or the original country. Because when you are making more and more and more, you will do mistakes. It's common sense. In other words, if I wouldn't buy this pair from Adidas webpage, I will probably have the same dilemma like the person that made that comment on one of my videos, you know. I will have exactly the same doubts if this pair is original or fake. That's why it's important to, to do it well, you know, all the time. If you are wondering what happened after, well, he had to go to the Adidas store because he didn't have his peace of mind. So they said they are the original thing, but they have these variations because they came from China. That's why I'm using this video to show you if you are in his situation or mine, to be sure that you have an, an original uh, a pair, it's not a fake, you know. I received this pair from Adidas uh, Spain, so this is an original pair. The only thing is that it came from China. So that's why it looks different. There are some quality issues there, so. Back to our video, here we can see the laces, I think they have the right amount of elasticity.
In this shot we see the stitching for this cage. And finally we have the weight test. Here we can see some proper on-fit shots. This is the type of arch that I have and the instep that I have. So the fitting, it might be different for other people. If you are wondering if they are true to size or not, I will say that they are true to size, at least for me. The only problem that I had is that they are just a bit too narrow for my feet, but maybe in time they could lose a bit. Pros and cons. For pros, I will say that they have plenty of colorways. Before I said they have good quality, I won't say that anymore <laughs> because the quality is, you know, all over the places. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. For cons, well, they are a few things, at least for me. First of all, they don't have the cushioning that I was expecting when I saw that big uh, midsole. They actually lost a bit of the cushioning from the last year. Now they are more rigid, I don't know. They changed something and I didn't like it. A very important issue that I had with them this year, and this issue is new because in Ultra Boost 20 it wasn't there and now it is in 21. I don't know why, but they did it anyway. You see there where they are staying right over my toes, those merging panels were those. They are giving me uh, discomfort all the time so that was a big mistake and I heard people saying that they are using them without insoles but I think you shouldn't do that kind of compromise when you are buying such an expensive pair of sneakers you know 180 euros or dollars it's not cheap so for me as a common sense I cannot buy them and keep them just because of that that was a big mistake with those merging panels over my toes. So lack of cushioning and those merging panels that are staying over my toes, for me, they lost completely the comfort that I had in the past with Ultra Boost, you know. I used to love them and somehow they managed to ruin all those good memories that I had with them. I hope with this new Ultra Boost 22 that came out a few weeks ago, they solved all these issues that I had with them this year, or at least most of them. So I'm looking forward to see how those are now. I think even if you have the chance to buy them at a lower price, you shouldn't do it, to be honest. Search something else, there are better sneakers out there. Take your time, see everything else that is unveilable and work as you wish. If you are a big fan, just buy them <laughs> if you don't care about comfort, cushioning or weight because they are quite heavy, 640 grams, they are plenty for a running sneakers but hey, as you wish, is your choice obviously. I will end here my review, thank you very much for watching, see you next time, if you have any questions please let me know, I will try to answer them, have a nice day.